All right. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I did a little um, research into the DP debug injection. Um, it's kind of like uh, an alternative to uh, um, openness property injection kind of stuff to get similar results. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So yeah, obligatory who am I? My name's Daniel, I'm third year CSAT. I do black team, red team, and I'm uh, doing our lab, doing our lab this semester, so we should come to our lab three times. All right, moving on. So very quickly, I'm gonna do a little bit of an ELF refresher, uh, a Google file format, um, format files. If you were, uh, last semester I gave like a really good presentation that went really in depth into ELFs, and the more you understand that, the more you understand this presentation, but I'm just gonna do a quick refresher to some like relevant bits for now. So if you remember, there are two kind of perspectives to look at a DLI file, right? There's a movement perspective and an execution perspective. Um, and well, we're going to talk about the dynamic, uh, the dynamic entry or the dynamic table uh, in particular, and that entry is actually kind of referenced by both of these sections, um, in both the program header table and the fetcher header table. So, but the way I'm going to approach it is kind of more from the program header table point of view, or just more uh, relevant. So yeah, your else uh, header, you go to your program header table, and I'll take you to um, a list of an array of these structs, okay? So you have a lot of these structs, an array of them. Um, it says ELF32, but it also also works for ELF34, same thing, pretty much identical. And yeah, at the dynamic um, table, program, at the program header table, it's gonna have a list, an array of these, and one of them is gonna be of p-type dynamic, and that's kind of where we want to go for this technique. So pretty much, you have your ELF, you go to the program header table, you parse through this until you find the um, dynamic entry, you're not where you want to be, okay? Uh, da, 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 da. You're the dynamic segment, which looks like this, okay? So you eventually get here. And the dynamic segment has an array of these values, okay? Of these uh, ELF 6432 underscore DYNs, okay? And so um, these things are used for like when a file is importing code from like another file, right? Like a shared libraries, anything like that, you're gonna have these. Uh, they kind of help say, hey, here's where the file is, include it, stuff like that. Um, not too important to understand all the intricacies of that stuff for this presentation, but just so you know. So yeah, there's a array of these things, has this stuff important for dynamic linking, and it has these values, right? There's the D tag, which um, kind of tells you what type the dynamic entry is. Uh, pretty much its role is to like dictate how the other value, the union, is going to be interpreted. It's going to tell you, you know, to use whether the D val or the D pointer. Um, yeah, so the D val. What that value represents is what's really important here, and that's going to actually vary based on what the D tag is. Okay. All right. So moving onwards, these are all the different potential types for D tag. There are a lot of them. Um, the only ones that are that I'm going to talk about uh, right now are these two: the DT needed and the DT debug. Because through these two, we're going to be able to do some cool process injection stuff. Kind of. Uh, all right, so let's talk about what those two are and what they do. Okay, so starting, we'll talk about DT needed. Um, so there's a DT needed entry for each needed library a file might have to take. All right, um, it's pretty much just says, hey, you also need this file in order for this executable to run. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty handy. Keep that in mind. And the value for DT needed tags is the offset into the dynamic stream table, which is just a table of strings, okay? And uh, for the name of the shared object that is getting imported, all right? And so that's DT needed. It's pretty important, pretty cool, does a lot of stuff. Uh, and then the other one, DT debug, has no clear purpose or use. Um, its value is zero all the time. And it's present in all binaries with shared libraries, uh, well, usually. Um, and that's pretty much like all binaries, really. Um, well, most of them. So the thought process here, right, is what if it's, what if I can take a DT debug and kind of make it into a DT needed? 
and then through that include inject my own code, right? So, oh, okay, first I'll show you a little bit of what those things look like. I put that in holders. That was a red team presentation, actually. Yeah. Is that up there? Okay, cool. I'm going to go to that. We're right there. Okay, so we're just going to copy. Um, we're going to use LS as an example. Okay. So we see we have LS.test here, right? We can run it. It's just regular LS right now. Cool. So I'm going to uh, use a tool called LSSH, uh, which lets us play with our file. It's a really cool tool. I um, wrote like 15 years ago, and it's getting it set up for um, a bit of a pain. Like you had to change a few lines of code to actually get it working. But uh, it's a cool tool for doing this kind of stuff. So I'm going to load in the copy of LS I just made. And we're going to print out the um, We do this. We can see that uh, LS has two DC needed um, entries. It's kind of cut off by my camera, but uh, you can see what's important here, right? Um, these are the two DC needed uh, strings that are getting included. Okay, so it's including libc and uh, libcat I put that here, right? Now, if we were to look at um, Uh, if we were to look at the debug, we see that it also has a debug value and it's set to zero. It's not doing anything, it's just kind of there. All right. So, I'll just show you those two things. All right, back to the slides. Okay. All right. So. Does that make sense? Anyone have questions about that? Cool. All right. So the attack is: what if we change that DT debug value into a DT needed value? Um, so by including our own shared object file, right, we can inject code into any binary with DT debug if we're able to pull that off. Um, that just injects the code into it, right? That doesn't actually cover how that code is going to get executed, really. But it's a good place to start. Okay, injecting the code. So we'll start there, right? And the thought process of okay, how do we actually how do we actually do that? Um, there's a few things you have to do. So first, you have to change the DT debug to DT needed, the D tag value of that, right? Then you need to change the um, the order the symbols are resolved in, and this will come into play when we talk about the actual computing later. But pretty much, we're going to be hooking something, and in order for that uh, hook to work, it has to be resolved first. So it says, okay, this is the one that we're going to use. So we need to make sure that um, our new DT needed tag is going to be resolved first. And then we need to change the value, the D value of our new DT needed tag to um, some, some offset that an extreme table that we can use to load our shared library. Right? So how do we do that? Um, I'm going to go over some like C code. Uh, first, we have to find the actual entries. All right, so here I'm just uh, like parsing through all the dynamic entries to find a uh, first to find the DT needed entry, right? Because we're gonna have to use this later when we um, kind of change the symbol resolution order. And also, we need to find our DT debug uh, entry because that's what we're working with, right? So we do that, cool. And then we need to change the D tag. Okay, pretty simple. You just you know, if uh, you just change the entries D tag into DT needed, DT needed is an echo of some number that represents DT needed, right? Because it tells uh, the file that's in the DT needed um, value. Of course, pretty simple. And then you need to change the symbol order. So, 
first we um, we save the, uh, the value of the deleted one. Um, we we're pretty much just switching your addresses, right? When you save a new address, you switch the our debug address to the um, uh, the PC needed that we found earlier, and then we. Um, We just change the value of the um, pointer value that this is address. Uh, and we just make sure that. So, pretty much what you need to know is that our old BT debug thing is now being thought of as the BT needed thing. So, when we do the next part, this is where it gets pretty funny, is that because we changed the, uh, like the address, then we swap the two addresses. Uh, this DT needed entry, even though it's called DT needed entry, is the same thing that we were working with earlier. It's actually a DT debug that became DT needed. But because it's now at that address, at the old DT needed entry, I'm referencing, referencing it as DT needed. And um, what we're just doing here is we're changing the value, because remember, this is a, um, a value that is an offset to the NS string table. I'm just taking what was there before and adding two to it. Um, and that's going to Give us a new string that we have to figure out what it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we do that, and that's how we can change those values to get pretty much what we want with our new DT uh, needed. But what is the actual code that we're going to um, include? Like, what's our shared object library actually going to have in it? How are we going to get rid of that? Um, that's what this is. So, this is our most shared object. Um, this is uh, function hooking. We're pretty much hooking the open dir function, which LS uses. Um, and in this example, all I'm really doing is printing a we hijacked it, and then I'm going to run a reverse shell, and then um, return the original open dir. Um, obviously, that's not actually going to ever happen because reverse shell is going to kind of overtake the process. And I ideally, I'd run that in like a portion process and do it in a different. Um, process that way we can actually return the original ls back. But uh, yeah, this should look pretty familiar if you ever look at any kind of function hooking or rootkit type of stuff. But yeah, that's the idea. So to do that, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, demo the tool that I put together to actually do all this stuff. Uh, Right. So the tool that I made is called Ubik. Um, I'm going to just give it ls.test. Set parameter. I'm going to run this. And it tells us just some random stuff. You know, time here is cool. And now if we, um, let's go to load up alpha sage again. We look right. If we were to examine the DT needed values, we'll see that there is now a new one called dcast.so.2. So this is our old DT uh, debug value that we um, turned into a DT needed value and then gave it a, a new uh, D value that references. Is pcat.so.2. So it's not an actual shared library that exists, um, but we can make it and then um, put a malicious code in there and then get that malicious code executed. Right? So I'll actually also show if you look for our old debug value, we'll see that it is actually no longer there. Um, there is none. Because we change it to DT needed, right? Cool. So now, if I yeah, also test in there, right? Um, let me just look at my malicious thing. What did I do with this? Yeah, I remember what for I did. Okay. Okay. So if I compile that the uh, program. They get it shared. 
and we'll output it to uh, ncat so so we do that see that it's there we're going to move that file to our uh, to our libraries All right. So that's in there now, and we're gonna open up a new terminal. Gonna set up a listener. To listen on four, 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 four. And if I run the ls test, you'll see that we got open dirt hijack, so our injection worked. And we got a, okay, let me see if I can see that. We got a shell in this other terminal, right, where we set up our list. So, cool. Process injection by injecting the PG debug. All right. Are there any questions? Splendid. Um, so you might be wondering, okay, so then how do you defend against this? Um, somebody else asked that question once. Um, so the way you would do that is actually this is not very stealthy. If we just look at, we use this tool called LDD, which will show us what shared libraries are actually being used. We use LDD, we can just see that it's including this. Um, dcap.so.2, which I mean, if you know it's not a real thing, then that would you know make you kind of suspicious that this was injected into. So it's actually not stealthy. It uh, tampers with the file. Um, it could be pretty caught. It could be caught pretty easily if you find that there. But the uh, the nice thing about this tool, right, is that you can just run this against pretty much every single binary on the system. And as long as you have the shared library audit file you need in the list library folder. Um, it's pretty persistent just because it's like a pain in the ass to get rid of. So, yeah, that's the uh, just on it. There's no questions. Thank you.